Guys, welcome. Okay, so Lee, who's winning? Well, I think Amazon, I think Google's winning. Anybody who's in the AI trade to get global IT out of their local servers and onto the clouds. Remember, I don't care how long it takes for Apple intelligence. I don't care how long it takes for a company that that's makes single digit earnings. I want to see that movement to the cloud that we've been having for a while. And right now, the stragglers, global IT that's not on the cloud, you have to get them to that. And I think artificial intelligence is going to be the main reason why you're going to go to the chief in, in information officers and get them to do it. That's where the money's being made. That's my sole focus. And if you're not part of that trade, I just don't think you've got the, you know, you don't got the thing that you need to make the big money and keep big multiples. Huh. Tom, I see this persistent skepticism around AI from here, and is it really driving results? But at the same time, within Meta, we've seen Mark Zuckerberg talking about how they've been able to get results for things like Reels to be able to uh, increase engagement. That's why he's investing more. We heard from Microsoft that in the second half of their fiscal year, so calendar uh, 2025, they expect to see uplift there. So shouldn't that be enough to indicate that there's some strong potential for return here? Yeah, I think you need to distinguish between these consumer AI companies like Alphabet and Amazon and Meta, where they're making money now targeting content, essentially, ads and entertainment content. They've been making money for a long time, actually, before even generative AI became a big thing. So very, very real business. And I always think it's funny how Meta gets beaten up every time they do CapEx, because they've actually had, I think, a much better history of generating ROI on that than has yet been proven in some of the other names. Yeah, just as long as we're not talking about metaverse. That's still, we still have to wait and see on that. All right, Lee, um, on security, cybersecurity, you like Palo Alto Networks. There are a number of names in this space pursuing a platform strategy. Um, you know, you got CrowdStrike, which had its issues earlier this year. You got Zscaler, et cetera. Why do you like Palo Alto in particular? What do you see them doing that makes them worth buying? I like bigger I like enterprise. I like where most of the CapEx is going to be. Zscaler, it's, fine. it's too small. CrowdStrike, too much focus on retail. Palo Alto, it's all about your Fortune 100, Fortune 500. It's about the big integration of firewall. It's about big integration of hardware and software. I think they're just going to be the category killer. I'm not really interested in cybersecurity when it starts getting diffused down to small businesses. That's just not where I think the big money is, the big guy. No different than where... You know, it is on, on, on cloud and AI cloud. It's all about the big players bringing in big dollars. That's the stage I believe that we are in now. Two or three years, we'll see. Hmm. Tom, on a day when the semiconductors are hurting, you like TSMC, which manufactures chips for just about everybody, including Apple, NVIDIA, AMD, others. You like ASML that makes the highest end, really expensive equipment uh, advanced lithography for building uh, these really advanced chips. Maybe people can get these names on sale. Why do you like that, particularly when there are these questions about the stability of demand going forward? Well, we love the semiconductor equipment companies because they're really picks and shovels to any number of end markets. And so you can be very agnostic about what the actual application is. As long as there's some advancement of technology over time around the world, these are the companies that are benefiting. You're getting these companies a little bit of a discount because people are worried about the next iPhone cycle. They are worried about Intel's CapEx coming down in the case of ASML. They're worried about sanctions with China. But really what matters over time is the end demand across AI and any number of things. And these are really companies without peer who have no competitors and aren't trading at crazy valuations. So we love this as a way to play the big megatrends. 